Pedal to the floor. That does not sound normal whatsoever. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have an American farm truck special 1996 Ford F-250 with the big boy 7.5 liter, the best never rest farm all. So the owner brought this on a, on a trailer. Uh, he said, he rebuilt the entire engine. I mean, this thing is painted like lake new. Um, he said it started up fine, but then he said he had no oil pressure because the distributor shaft wasn't aligned with the oil pump. So he took it out, put it back in, and then he fired it up. And he said the truck at idle ran really crappy. Once you get it up to speed, it seems to be okay. So he wants me. He just said, like, double check the timing, see what's going on with this thing. He said he's already spent a lot of money and effort on this truck. He wants it right. So, that's what we we're here to do. So, I drove it from the barn down there up to here. And sure enough, at idle, it sounds like it has a custom cam. It's like, blah, 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 blah. And then once you give it gas, it takes off, seems to drive really nicely. I parked it here, shut it off, and now I can't get it started because it seems like the starter is slipping or something. So that's kind of a problem. Let's try again. Here the fuel pump. There we go. Let's see if it'll... Nope, just stalled out. Try again. Hear that? No compression? Is the engine turning over? Put the pedal to the... <laughs> Let's try again. Pedal to the floor. That does not sound normal whatsoever. I want to see if the engine's actually turning over when that happens. You guys look at the at the belt here. Look at the fan. Sounds really rich. I guess the engine's turning over. I didn't hear compression really. Very, very strange. So what do we start with here? I mean, it's a 1996. We don't have live data. It's pretty basic, but you have to check everything manually. Hmm. The fact that there's no compression is kind of concerning. And check fuel pressure. Schrader valves right here, easy to do. Get a timing light. Because when it runs, when it ran here, when it was cold, it accelerated really well. Like smoothly. But at idle, it was like loping, 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 and now it's almost like it's flooded out. So, what would be your next step? So I got it running again. It's really not happy. It's almost like it's dropping out cylinders.
me it'll stay running. No, not quite. Really, really rough. You rev it up and then it stalls out. Sounds like it has no compression. Is it flooding itself out or this engine's fresh from a rebuild? Who knows, uh, you know, if they did a good job with the valves, with the piston rings. I don't know if you got a new block. The way it cranks is just really concerning. It's just that oh, none of the cylinders have any compression. Well, it's idling on its own now. Seems to have gotten a little better. Obviously it's still not happy, but it's a lot better. Like super smooth right there. Right there, misfire. I'll let it idle again. So, I got it to the road. Seems to be running pretty damn well. Like, no misfire. Okay, there's a little shake right there. Let's just take it for a spin here. Got it, just a mirror, old school. There we go. Nothing wrong with uh, not having power mirrors, right? Great power, like no problems <laughs> at all. Windshield is horrendous. I can't see anything at all. I don't know, they sandblasted it. I tried cleaning it. gonna give it the beans, clean out those plugs. Oh. Wow, sounds like it's got a bad wheel bearing or a drive shaft problem or something. I'm gonna take it around the block, see what happens. Check engine light popped on. Well, that's kind of neat. We'll have to hook up the Varus and or flash the codes or something, see what that is. It seems to run pretty decent. It shifts kind of hard. But definitely no misfires. So, made it back to shop here uh, the fuel gauge was almost on empty I didn't know how fast this thing drinks gas I assume pretty fast what if we switch to the rear tank does that like switch the, uh, the needle too so 
So it still has that shake after um, revving it up. It will stall out. Like if you rev it up, it'll just stall out unless you keep it going. It actually fires up without any additional throttle. Still, still shaky. So I don't know if that works or not. I'll ask the owner how much gas is in this thing. Like it'll dig my driveway and it's super smooth right now. Just that, that idle, like a, one cylinder is partially, partially missing. Very interesting. Ha! <sighs> so, the variables with, you know, after a fresh engine rebuild, you gotta kind of break it in. Trying to run around diagnosing little issues before test driving it at least a few miles, doing some hard acceleration, see how it drives. It could be a waste of time. So, I'll talk to the owner, ask him, you know, which gas tank should I put gas in and kind of go from there we'll try another cold start like right now the engines hot we can get baseline readings with probably with a scope at least the map and the coolant temp sensor those are the two key you know fuel mixture sensors uh, the check engine light you know once I turned it off it disappeared we'll see if it was stored in in the engine computer you scan it, go from there. But these old trucks, they're, they're pretty fun, but without live data, you can see it's gonna take a lot longer to diagnose. So here's a cool use for a thermal camera. You can see, is number seven cylinder misfiring? So let's look at the headers. You can see cylinder five and six are pretty even. Number seven is definitely darker. Let's see if we can get this in the camera here. It's definitely cooler than six or five, six, and eight. Number seven is definitely cooler. Very now at idle, that cylinder is misfire. That's pretty, pretty neat. Why is it misfire? It's a great question. Spark fuel compression on a rebuilt engine. Anything's possible. Um, I did a cylinder drop test just by disconnecting the number seven fuel injector. If I disconnect this injector, almost no change to the running of the engine. If I disconnect number eight, Definitely more contribution. So, cylinder drop test would definitely be a good thing to do. So, you know, when we're cruising, everything seems to be working pretty well, but right now it's definitely not happy. So, the injector flow test, pop out a spark plug, switch the spark plugs around, easy to do. See what's going on. A relative compression test of this engine, it's yeah, might not be broken in enough yet. All right, so I got the OBD1 connector under the hood. Let's see what this check engine light was all about. Key on engine off self-test, key on engine run self-test, clear codes, code speed, code speed. Um, so we can only do a key on engine off self-test or a key on engine run. So data display... Would this thing have any live data? Oh, well, it does have live data. Maybe I was being a little too harsh on Fords. <laughs> okay. So let's see, let's press the gas pedal. We're at one volt on the TPS. 4.6, okay. 
Map Hertz is 156. Now the Map Hertz will have to um, look up the, the little table. Is that in spec? CT is close throttle, partial th partial throttle, wide open throttle. Okay, 183 on the engine coolant temp. That seems to be okay. EVR. That's the EGR valve. V ref voltage 6.7 not exactly sure but we do have short term trim and we do have our oxygen sensor so let's just start up it's definitely rich short term trim so this is percent I'm just going to rev it up stays rich all the time. Sensor 1. It's not happy. See if this oxygen sensor can drop lean. Let's try again. So there's the IAC at 50 percent. Now, considering we have a single cylinder misfire, that right there should be lower, but it's you know fighting against the engine that isn't running very well. We gotta take care of this misfire first. Definitely running rich, you know, all the time. So let's just save this data. It's nice that we do have live data. Let's do a key on engine off self test. So cycle key off. Cycle key on, okay. Do not start engine. It'll basically check continuity of everything, all the solenoids. No faults present, okay. Now let's do the key on engine run self test. Continue. It's at operating temp. Fires right up. Continue. So it's definitely shaking. Press and release brake pedal. Turn steering wheel 180 degrees. I think it checks the uh, power steering, whatever load. Cycle the overdrive off switch. That works. And then it, just let it simmer here. It'll raise the RPMs up. I, mean, I have a feeling it's gonna be either like a clogged injector like we saw on that F 150 on the straight six a couple years ago plug might be followed out but once we get the plug out we should see something interesting we'll get like number seven and number six take those plugs out and just see what they look like probably be the most fruitful thing to do 
Eco 10 snap throttle. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, six, seven. So the same 126, 173, and 213. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Take these codes with a grain of salt. How about that? Let's look at live data one more time. So now I'm going to try to do a clear flood crank. Let's see. To the floor. Okay, so you heard that it sounds pretty nice. Nice and even. There's no like da 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 da. So again, it's going to be ignition or in injector pulse on cylinder number seven. That's what I'm suspecting. We can put the ignition scope on there one more time just to confirm at idle that we have something funky on the spark line. And from that, we can actually say, is it too rich on cylinder number seven or too lean? Or what's going on? It's a leaky injector, perhaps. Something like that. I'll go from there. So we're definitely eliminating variables just from the driver's seat. So I unplugged number seven fuel injector completely. Let's put under a little bit of load. It's still a single cylinder misfire, so we're definitely going after number seven. You can see number seven is now lean. That tail is going up instead of down. Okay, now I want to take a look at live data at the oxygen sensor, see if that's stuck lean or not. And what happened to the fuel trim? So with number seven injector unplugged, look at the live data. I am in gear under slight load. Oxygen sensor is, you know, somewhere in the middle. Fuel trims are about zero. Okay, when you plug the injector in, you see if that picture changes dramatically. Is our oxygen sensor just going to get stuck? Rich? So I plug the injector in. And now we actually have a nice oscillation on our O2 sensor, and the only thing I feel is a little fish bite misfire. It's running pretty smooth right now. That's actually looking pretty decent. See, I like that. Everything's running smooth. The oxygen sensor is oscillating now very nicely. Trim is right around 0%. Taking a lot of fuel away. Okay, we're back in control. Give it a little bit of gas. Back in control. Okay. Put it in park. Now we're starting the little shaky shake again. It was fine for a while. Could it just be a bad spark plug? Could be. Now I can now I have enough evidence to pull that spark plug out. So we got some spark plugs out. Here's number seven. It definitely looks black and sooty. 
but the tip is starting to clean up a little bit. Here, I'll try to not blind it with the light. Okay, the neighboring one, number six, is a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. So we're definitely on the right track. Let's swap these two around. I might clean this one with a wire brush just to see what happens. We'll see if the misfire stays, if it moves, what's going on, go from there. Spark plugs are in, let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Feel difference already, let's see. Down to an idle. Is it gonna misfire? Seems better. It's interesting, after a rev, it doesn't like like to recover. Okay. Let's put that ignition scope back on there, see if the problem moved with the plug, or if it's cell number seven. So I still don't like that spark plug that we cleaned out. Moved it from number seven to number six, look at that, boom. So it's, it's fouled out. So we're gonna have to get a couple of new spark plugs and uh, see if this thing runs any smoother. Well, I was seeing something weird on the scope, on waveform, on number two, and it's also just as bad as number seven. So let's clean this one up. I think all these plugs are just fouled out. So we're getting better, I think. I think. Just, just followed plugs. Like, it revs so much cleaner now. So we cleaned number seven, put it in number six, clean number two. watching the scanner, I mean, you could say, just replace all the plugs again. Well, thing number one. Yeah, I don't like number one. There, number one. Yeah, let me clean up number one. Just right there, you actually saw it. Right there. Don't like that. Number five. <laughs> Don't like that. Number two. Don't like that. Right there. 